Hello and welcome to Heads Up. We previously spoke about the poor quality of education in India and today we will be focusing on an issue just as pressing and this has a direct impact on entrepreneurship and innovation in our country. We are talking research and development or the perceived lack of investment in this sector in India. Before we get to the big debate on what's ailing the R&D ecosystem in the country, here's a look at the current scenario. Will the next big idea and innovation you see be from India? Will an Apple, a WhatsApp or a quantum computer have its genesis from the country? Doubts exist owing to India's research and development scenario. The country has already witnessed its various golden ages, whether in the software and IT wave of the late 90s, manufacturing and auto-related growth or the startups of the new millennium. But there is still one area which has remained stagnant over the years, research and development. After independence, India followed a flawed model, which is the Soviet model, of setting up specialized labs like the CSIR, which works as ivory towers, where only those res researchers do research. So research was not done in the universities. Because research was diverse from education, and our universities became teaching uh, institutions rather than research-based teaching institutions, the generation of knowledge in the university system came down. We're not producing enough graduates who have an interest in research. So unless we bring in research into the universities, we will not be able to be successful and for that public funding is very essential. And what our public spending is there is given to select institutions which in the end do not provide many things. Apart from the biocons of the country, riding the R&D wave in India is Temputics, a homegrown player building its way to becoming one of the more successful R&D intensive companies. Started in 2006 in Bangalore, today Temputics employs over 40 scientists and researchers all working towards one aim developing stem cell related usable medical products our main focus our main goal is to um, is to develop an um, innovative stem cell drug for major unmet medical needs uh, with india first and global next we have faced many challenges in terms of uh, getting the regulatory approvals working with the regulators and uh, developing the regulatory framework, conducting the clinical trials as per the good cl clinical practice and designing the preclinical models to see the efficacy of our drug and uh, building a GMP facility, good manufacturing practice uh, uh, facility uh, for these stem cells and getting approval from DCGI and uh, also raising money because uh, developing a product is not so easy, it takes a very long time and it requires a lot of cash. Stemputics major research involves using adult stem cells to create products for unmet medical needs. The company now has patents filed in over 18 countries for their products. And to further validate their work, they are backed by the Manipal Group. Pharma major Sipla also accesses its products. But not every company is as lucky as Stemputics. In India, the dearth of graduates opting for a career in R&D and companies investing in it are a far cry away trend in the country is uh, to continue in academia. So the graduates tend to continue uh, in academia, pursue postdoctoral research and a lot of graduates also tend to go to the west. The budget allocated to uh, developing science and technology and uh, developing the R&D infrastructure over here is much less. So uh, definitely researchers end up waiting for a long time to get their reagents or to get the right kind of equipment which can help them do cutting edge work. Uh, the stipend would also affect because if uh, the students, young students were to pursue this as a career, then they also need to think about the monetary returns. So definitely these both the inf available infrastructure as well as the stipends that they get would both affect the decisions. The state of R&D on ground in India is not a pretty picture. Indian companies themselves don't invest very highly in their research and development budget. 60% of the total spend on research and development in the country, or over 60,000 crores, comes from the government. Private companies contributed only 35% to the overall spend on research and development in India, while the contribution from higher education institutes themselves were at a low 5% or just 5,000 odd crores. What's worse, India's total spend on research and development as a part of GDP has remained stagnant for over three years at just 2.7%. The biggest contribution to R&D in the country came from the pharma sector. So where is the knot? And why is India lagging when it comes to research and development? 
lot of talent that we got, they were great talent, but they came from software services companies. Uh, they were very strong technically, uh, they knew how to interact with the customers, uh, but they did not have the product mindset. I think it is very, very important because you know, uh, successful products drive tremendous amount of innovation, right? Successful products designed, you know, for specific, uh, you know, verticals, domains, societies, uh, actually up level the entire game. And therefore, being able to do that local innovation for the society, for the industry, the value that you create, uh, you know, for the ecosystem is tremendous. Experts say that the services mindset is the biggest con that India faces when it comes to becoming a product and R&D nation. They say that while the funds exist, its implementation by private companies is poor. If you look at DRDO, it's taken you 30 years to do that uh, light aircraft, light uh, trainer aircraft. 30 years if the private sector were involved, if the colleges, universities are involved, it could have been done in 15 years. Instead of the choose to do in three or four labs within the DRDO network, and they're incapable of doing that because they never run industries. They don't know how to do manufacturing, right? So you require dissemination of research. So the American model where there's public spending and money is given to companies and to laboratories and the dissemination and diffusion of research into general industry, that is the best model and India has failed from the policy level in doing this. Meanwhile, while most Indian companies shy away from the R&D landscape, global players like Cisco are making the most of Indian talent. We found that you know, we could cover almost 50% of world's population in about 4-5 hours of flying time and that was a great thing um, you know, from our perspective. It's not just one factor that plays into it, but availability of talent definitely plays into it. Uh, you know, educational institutes and proximity to them, uh, that plays a, a very big role. Uh, lastly, availability of uh, customers and ability to interact with customers in the region, that also plays a very big role. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, many of the companies are actually sort of investing in the cities. Clearly, all global players are eyeing the Indian R&D market. Want more proof of the pudding? There are over 1,000 MNCs with research and development centers in the country. Of the global 500 companies spending intensively on research and development, 229 have ensured that they have a research base in India, with over 10% of the talent also from the country. The key areas they are focusing on? The Bangalore, Pune and Hyderabad Triangle. While the bigger companies are betting big on R&D in India, the younger generation of startups are making sure that they don't miss out on focusing on research and development. How are they doing it? In some of the most innovative ways possible.